Hi and welcome to this webinar. My name is Erik Svenning and I am working for Dynamo Nordic. Today I will show you how splashing and sloshing can be modeled in Alestina using the smooth particle hydrodynamics method. The purpose of this webinar is to demonstrate the capabilities for modeling splashing and sloshing using the smooth particle hydrodynamics module in Alestina. First, I will give you an introduction and motivation, followed by the most important aspects of the SPH theory. We will look at the most important keywords and how to set up a simulation. I will also show a couple of examples and then we will summarize. Okay, so now we go on with the introduction and the theory of SPH. And the first question that you might ask yourself is when SPH is useful. And uh, typically SPH is a good choice when you have large material distortion or when the material decomposes into many small fragments or droplets, or as we are interested in in this webinar, when you have fluid problems with moving boundaries and free surfaces. And the, the main characteristics of SPH is that it is particle based and it is typically solved with explicit time integration. And uh, as with all numerical methods, there are some limitations and issues that you need to be aware of. And for SPH, uh, local mesh refinement can be problematic. And it is also important to be aware of that some types of boundary conditions can be difficult to handle. The history of uh, mesh-free methods uh, started with uh, some pioneering works in the late 1970s and during the 1980s. Uh, then there has been quite much uh, theoretical developments uh, aiming at improving accuracy and uh, stability of the method. And uh, today SPH can be applied to a number of different areas such as uh, forging, extrusion and metal cutting. Uh, impact problems like uh, bird strike and high velocity impact and uh, also as we are interested in in this webinar fluid structure interaction problems and uh, splashing and sloshing. The SPH method is a particle based method which means that the continuum is approximated by a set of arbitrarily distributed particles and the material coordinates are independent variables, which means that uh, there is no convective term involved in the formulation. And uh, this allows uh, large material distortion and also modeling of free surface flows. Uh, for the particle approximation of a function, we write an approximation with a kernel function W, as you can see here where h is the smoothing length and we note that uh, if we would set uh, the kernel function w equal to the Dirac delta then this approximation would be exact but you would then also theoretically need an infinite amount of particles and the kernel function is uh, typically constructed in such a way that uh, w approaches the Direct delta distribution as uh, the smoothing length h goes to zero. And very often cubic B spline functions are used. So now we can apply a quadrature formula to our particle approximation, as you can see here, where Wj is the weight of particle j. And uh, if the kernel function W has compact support, we will get a sparse scheme, which is of course desirable from a numerical point of view. And we also get a similar expression for the gradient of our approximation, as you can see here. And uh, since this is a particle based method, an important aspect is the neighbor search, since we need to know the neighbors of each particle in order to compute the contribution. 
and uh, this is done in Alestina by a bucket sort similar to the contact uh, search algorithm. I will say a little bit more about that when we go through the keywords. And uh, when you have these ingredients, you can solve for conservation of mass, momentum and energy. Okay, so now we will look at a few keywords that are important for SPH simulations. And the first two keywords that you see here are related to efficiency for MPP. Then we will look at uh, control SPH, section SPH and element SPH where you uh, do your settings for SPH theory and such things. Then we will look at uh, mat null and uh, the equation of state where you define your material behavior. And I will also say something about uh, contact for SPH particles. So the first keyword that we will talk about is uh, control MPP decomposition distribute SPH elements. And uh, it ensures that SPH elements are evenly distributed to all processors uh, at the start of the simulation. So this it requires no input parameters and I recommend that you always use it in your SPH simulations. You can also activate control MPP IO no dump, which will suppress the output of dump files and full deck restart files. The next keyword we will look at is control SPH, which contains a couple of important settings for SPH simulations. And uh, the first option I would like to mention is NCBS, which is the number of time steps between particle sorting. Uh, this defaults uh, to one, but sometimes it, uh, it may be increased to save some computational time. Uh, if you can increase it or not, that will depend on your particular uh, uh, simulation setup. Another good option is the box ID. Uh, where particles that leave this box are uh, deactivated in order to save computational time. And I recommend that you always uh, specify a box here to, in order to deactivate particles that leave your computational domain. Uh, you may also set uh, IDIM, which uh, defines uh, the space dimension for SPH particles. Uh, default uh, is uh, 3D, but you may also set uh, to the plane strain or to the axisymmetric problems here. Form controls the particle approximation theory. Form equals 15 or 16 is recommended for fluid applications. Uh, these are both enhanced fluid formulations with the pressure smoothing and form equals 16 gives a formulation with renormalization which is usually more expensive and more accurate. Uh, there are several other particle approximation theories available. Uh, for example, form equals zero is default and form equals one is recommended for most solid structural applications. Uh, Max V allows uh, particles with a velocity greater than max v to be activated and the contact thickness may be controlled by ithk where ithk equals to zero implies that the contact thickness is set to zero this is the default uh, you may also set ithk equal to one and then the contact thickness will be computed from the particle volume for the section SPH keyword, you can often use the default settings that works in most applications. The CSLH option gives a constant for calculation of initial smoothing length. You typically don't need to change that, but it's good to be aware of. And here you also have the possibility to set the H mean and H max, which give scale factors for the minimum and maximum smoothing length. In the element SPH keyword, you may set uh, the mass uh, where a mass greater than zero gives the mass of the element, 
whereas if you set uh, a negative value, then the absolute value will be used as volume of the particle, and the density will then be taken from the material card defined in the PID. The fluid material properties are specified with MAT0 in combination with a suitable equation of state. And in MAT0, rho gives the mass density of the fluid. Uh, PC defines a pressure cutoff, which allows a material to numerically cavitate. Uh, note here that uh, pressure cutoff is negative in tension. And uh, mu gives the dynamic viscosity of the material. Uh, T rod and C rod define a relative volume for erosion in tension and compression, respectively. The equation of state describes the relation between density and pressure, and for splashing and sloshing applications, EUS Murnagan is often a good choice. Uh, the EUS Murnagan has a pressure density relation given by the equation you can see here, and it is specifically designed to model incompressible fluid flow with SPH elements. Uh, here, gamma is often set to 7, and K0 is uh, frequently chosen based on the expected maximum fluid flow velocity. Uh, V0 is the initial relative volume, which can be left blank, and we also note that uh, uh, it is possible to reduce the stiffness of uh, the SPH particles, which will then allow larger time steps at the cost of increased, in, increased compressibility. And uh, if you don't want to use EOS Murnagan, then for example, EOS Gruneisen can be an alternative choice. For the interaction between SPH particles and the structure, you can use contact automatic nodes to surface. And here you will set the SPH particles as the slave part, so SSID, and the structure will then be the master ID, MSID. And as always with the contacts, there are plenty of parameters that you can play around with, but I will not go into the details of all of them today. To generate uh, SPH elements, it is possible to use LS prepost, and to do that, you click on Mesh and SPH generation. And here you have the possibility to generate SPH parts of different shapes. It can be simple shapes like a box or sphere, for example. Uh, it is also possible to generate SPH elements within the volume enclosed by a shell volume. This is very useful, as I will show on the next slide. There are some other options as well. Uh, you can set the density to minus one to make LS prepost compute the volume of each SPH particle, and then you can set the density of your SPH particles on the material card later. Uh, you can specify the distance between particles in, e in each direction and uh, remember to click uh, set params to then apply the settings. Here I have used LS prepost to generate SPH particles for a simplified gearbox and uh, you can see the geometry to the left and uh, the generated SPH particles to the right. And uh, here I have used uh, the shell volume method in LS prepost. And for this to work, the surface shell mesh needs to be watertight, but uh, the surface may consist of uh, several different parts, as in this example. Now I will show you some examples. And the first example I would like to show you is uh, a wheel rolling through a 10 mm thick water layer at 70 km per hour. And uh, here I used uh, an explicit finite element model for the tire with rigid rim and rigid ground. And uh, for the water I used uh, 2.4 million SPH particles. And uh, you can see the splashing of the water in the movie here. 
to show you a bit more realistic uh, splashing example, I used the Toyota Yaris model from Nitsa, which is an of course explicit finite element model, roughly around one and a half million elements. And I let it run at 56 kilometers per hour through a 20 millimeter thick uh, water layer. And uh, you can see the results here uh, to the right and the pictures at the bottom of the page. And uh, typically you could then uh, look at the distribution of water here, see how the water impacts uh, different uh, underbody panels. You could also extract uh, the water load on, on different parts of, uh, of the car. And uh, the simulation time for this example was uh, around 16 hours on 32 cores. Here I have set up an example of a simplified gearbox. So we have uh, two gears in a box uh, partially filled with oil. And uh, here I have modeled the gears as rigid and the oil is modeled by 300,000 SPH particles. And uh, we apply a prescribed motion of the upper gear. The upper gear then drives the lower gear through contact conditions. And uh, it, it is also possible to model the gears as deformable, but then at the cost of longer simulation time. So you have a choice here. If you, if you want to want them as rigid, it works fine. You can also do simulations with deformable gears. And uh, as you can see in the, in the movie, you, it, you have possibility to study how the, how the oil is distributed and how it is uh, splashing due to the motion of the gears. The last example I would like to show you is uh, a fluid structure interaction case where a water wave impacts a rigid column in a container and uh, the contact forces on the column are compared to experimental data. Uh, this model was developed by LSTC and it is available at uh, dynaexamples.com and as you can see in the figure to the right the force on the column uh, agrees very well between the simulation results and the experimental data. In this webinar, we have discussed how SPH can be used to model splashing and sloshing, and we have seen that uh, SPH can easily be coupled with uh, finite element models. If you would like to learn more, then there is an SPH course offered by Dynamore in Germany, which you can have a look at. And uh, if you have uh, any questions or comments, you are always welcome to contact me at erik.svenning at dynamore.se. And by that, I would like to thank you for your attention and see you next time. Goodbye.